Okay, hi everyone. So we're going to be looking at the TMP36 temperature sensor today. This is the one I got from Hobbytronics. Um, I think it was back in January I got that delivery. So let's uh, get this out of here. How am I going to get this out of here? Let's see if we can get in here with a screwdriver. So I think the first thing we need to do is have a quick look at the data sheet to just check out the pin connections on this, the pin out. We've just got three connections. This is the TO92 package. Um, so we'll have a like a supply voltage, a ground, and then the signal out. Uh, but just need to check on the data sheet which way round they go. So here is the data sheet. This is the TO92 pin out. So with the flat edge at the top, viewed from the bottom, pin one being on the left will be VS. Center pin, pin two is V out and pin three being the ground. So I'm going to pop that in the breadboard like that, I think. So supply on this side, ground on this side and signal out of the center. Uh, what's the best way to do this? Uh, five volts. I've got that in the right hole. Yep. So supply will be there, I think. We'll do the ground. On that side. That one. We'll stick this in A5 the same as we did last time. And that wants to be in the center. Pop him in there. So hopefully I've connected that right, otherwise this is going to be a very short video. Let's come out. Get in there. Okay. Let's very quickly um, talk about this temperature sensor, how this works. So the data sheet describes it as a low voltage precision centigrade temperature sensor. Um, it provides a, an output on the center pin, which is a voltage, which is directly uh, linear to degree C. So for every 10 millivolts, uh, we get one degree C or for every one degree C we get an additional 10 millivolts out of the pin and there is an offset there's an offset of 500 millivolts so at 500 millivolts that represents zero degree c and then uh, 510 millivolts would be one degree 520 would be two degrees and so on so it should just be simply a case of measuring the voltage off the center pin which we basically can just do what we did in the last video because we were measuring voltage and then it should just be a case of some very simple maths just to convert the voltage into degree C. And of course, once we've got degree C, we can convert to Fahrenheit if we want to. So I think the first thing I want to do is power it up and try and get some voltage readings off of that and see, see what we're getting. Okay, so I've powered it up running the exact same sketch as we were using in the last video to measure voltage on analog pin 5. And it looks pretty good actually. We are seeing 0.73 to 0.74 volts. I don't know if I can get a higher precision on that serial output, but I think that would equate to between 23 and 24 degrees C. We should see an increase if I could warm it up. I don't know if it will warm up just with my hands. Yeah, I can see it's gone to 75, 76. 
Okay, we get 77. It's going to get harder, isn't it? Seems to have stopped at about 76. It's about 26 degrees C if it's accurate. 77, just about. So really we just want to take a quick look at the maths and see what we need to do to convert that voltage into degrees centigrade or Celsius, whichever you prefer. So taking the sketch that we were using in the last video to measure voltage, I've just changed the variable name here to MV to represent millivolts. And then I'm just uh, taking the voltage that we got and multiplying it by a thousand. So that's just to convert from volts to millivolts, multiply by a thousand. Then I've changed the uh, serial print lines. I'm just printing the MV variable value and then just printing the uh, MV text string. And then next I've uh, got a new variable called deg C for degree C. And you can see here I'm taking my, milli my millivolt value minus 500. So minus 500 millivolts, that's the half, half a volt offset that we have so we just eliminate in the offset and then it's just simply a case of divide by 10 because if you remember it's 10 millivolts per degree c so to get from millivolts to degree c we just divide by 10. more serial print lines i'm just printing the deg c variable value and then the string deg c and you can see the output running here already we got um, around about 740 millivolts, um, 23 stroke 24 volts. I think it's sort of jumping backwards and forwards between um, one bit on the ADC, which I think equates to about four millivolts. So it's probably sort of jumping between um, 738 millivolts and 742 millivolts, which is giving us that just that little temperature difference. So I think that's quite normal. Now if I grab hold of the sensor with my fingers and warm it up, we should see the temperature going up and we can. We can see that's going up to like 27, 28 degrees there now. 29 degrees. And then if I let go, we should see it cool down again. It might be a little bit slower cooling down. It's going down to 28. 27 so it looks like it's working so that's um, pretty good and that was really easy okay so what I've done next for a little bit more interest um, I've put an LED in here it wouldn't really be an Arduino video without an LED would it so I put an LED in there and I'm just taking a current limiting resistor over to the ground connection and then this wire here is feeding in the LED and that's just connected to pin 13. I suppose I could have used the onboard LED but that wouldn't be quite as exciting would it? And then what I'm going to do is just change the code to see if we can get the uh, temperature to control the LED. So let's just have a look at the changes I've made to the code. So the first thing I've done is introduce this LED pin and set that to 13. And I've got another variable here, um, which is just defaulting to low. Then in my setup, we've now got the pin mode for the LED just set to an output. And then what I've done is I've moved the, all the code we had before and I've moved it out of the main loop and put it into this function called get deg C. And then I've just added a return deg C to the bottom. So we can just call this function to get the degree C. And then in the main loop, just made some changes here. Um, so I'm just getting the degree C by calling that function. And I've got an if statement here. It says if the output is low and the degree C is greater than or equal to 27, then we're going to make the output equal high. Then I've got another if statement that says if the output is high and the degree C is less than 25, we're going to make the output low. 
I've just used sort of a two, two degree sort of difference there. So we're going to turn it on once we reach 27, but we're not going to turn it off until we get down to 25. And then we won't turn it on again until we reach 27. It's just um, a, what they call a differential or a hysteresis of two degrees in there. That's just so that the um, output doesn't kind of flicker on and off. You have to have this two degree swing from one um, state to another. And then finally, all I'm doing is the digital write LED pin output. So the output value will be sent to that um, pin 13. So if we upload that. We do see the LED flicker a little bit as it's uh, booting up, but it does start in the uh, off state. Now, if I um, try not to get my hands in the way here, I'm going to try and heat the sensor up hold it up here a bit and you can see the led has come on we've reached 27 degrees it's actually saying 28 degrees now it's quite quick and if i let it cool down just take a little bit longer to cool down so about 27 now 26 26 we have just over 25 we should be close come on I think some of my problem is the room temperature is a little bit warmer in here now so it's going to struggle to get down to 25 again it's just sitting above 25. And there we go, it's gone off. It is sitting around about 25 degrees C, it's pretty close to 25 degrees C, so it's not gonna take much to warm that back up and make that come on again. There you go, it comes on quite quickly. Should go off again, might take a few seconds. It's just above 25. Still just above 25. It's a really struggle to get down to 25. I think the room's just got too hot. It's getting close, I can see by the readings. about a quarter of a degree over 25 at the minute. It only has to just dip below it. If I blow on it. There it goes. Yeah, so we've got like a basic thermostat there now, or a, yeah, I guess it's a thermostat. I mean, it's not actually controlling the temperature. It's just a temperature indicator, I guess, rather than a thermostat. We're not actually controlling anything. That's my wires just about to fall out. So I'll leave this video here. Um, I probably should have gone a little bit deeper into the, the, T, the specs on the TMP36. It is actually, um, capable of running off of the 3.3 volt supply. I think it can go down a bit lower than that as well, but you can run it off. Um, I think it might be 2.7 to 5.5 volts. 
Um, and there is also, um, a, this is a low, low power device specifically designed for low power applications. And there is a feature in it, um, where you can put it in like a, a low power mode or a, a sort of a standby mode. I guess in that mode, it probably is not reading the temperature. And then you can just sort of wake it up when you want to read the temperature. So you're not wasting energy when you don't want to take readings. But we don't get that feature in the, um, TO92 package that we've got here. You have to have one of the surface mount pa packages that has the additional pin to be able to control that. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. The um, So it is, hopefully that's demonstrated that it's really super easy to use. That's the, the main point that I wanted to try and get across. This is really easy, particularly if you want to work in degree C. I mean, it wouldn't be difficult at all to um, convert to convert to uh, Fahrenheit if you wanted to. So we'll leave it there. I think what we'll probably do in the future with this, it would be nice if we could get that temperature displayed, perhaps displayed out onto one of those little OLED screens that I got. So maybe when we take a look at the OLED screen, we can come back to this temperature sensor and hook that up and get a temperature display reading out. So as always, thanks for watching. As I stressed last time, really trying to push the subscribers now because we're getting really close to that 1,000 subscribers. I think at the last count, we're at 910. So just need another 90 more. So just need another 90 of you to click that button and we'll hit that 1,000 uh, subscriber mark. It should be a, a great milestone for me and the channel. So I'll see you next time.